Welcome back guys, it's Wednesday again, you know what that means. It's time for another edition of Comic Book Weekly. This week, we're going to let you know about some of our favorite titles that came out, as well as having a discussion about Marvel's Now versus DC's New 52. So, I'm going to let Bubbles kick it off for you. I'm, I'm not going with Bubbles. Yeah, it's decided by the fans, you are Bubbles. It wasn't our yeah, choice. Yeah, by, by fan. fans. Fans. Uh, You've been referred to it several times. Okay, well, I'm going to start off with Trillium Issue 3. I, w one thing that I love about this comic is it literally reminds me of reading my first comic. I am confused. I am lost. The art is the same way. I, I, I don't know what's going on, but as I said, it gives me the nostalgia of reading my very first comic, and I love it. It's, it's nice to be surprised in a comic book. This is written and art is done by Jeff Lemire, who's one of my favorite writers. Now, one thing about this, when I was reading it, I was sitting there reading it, and they're all reading their comics, and then all of a sudden I'd be like this. I was trying to figure out what he was doing. I was look, reading mine, looking over at him like, what is going on over there? Then I'd have to, then, then I'd be like, and it, I, I got lost because I'm like, am I reading it right? Am I, am I reading it the right way I should? It's confusing because this literally makes you read it upside down and backwards every once in a little while. I love it though. As I said, it's confusing. It's nice to have a little challenge in a comic book. I give, I give the story here a kapows. Kapow. <laughs> It's it's nice to see a little a little romantic story being being held here. It's 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 beginning. Now the art, though, on the other hand, I was I was n not so pleased with. It's good, not really, but it's it's all right. I understand he's Jeff Lemire's mainly a writer, but I do really understand how the art affects the writing here, and it really does. It literally looks like. I am reading this comic through the main guy's eyes, and the art kind of describes it through his eyes too, and that's what I love about it. So, as much as I didn't like it, I'm going to give the art five kapows. So, I'm going to pass it on to Travis. So this week I did all new X-Men. It's uh, all the X-Men special number one story. It uh, starts off the Arm of the Octopus, which is an event that ties in the Hall of all the X-Men from the past, and Spear Spider-Man. Uh, let's say... Someone shows up that gets them all involved. Pretty good, like it's surprising a bit, and uh, it it really leads you into the Indestructible Hulk special that's coming out that you really want to read. But uh, in total, the story I'd probably give it like 7.5 pounds. The art, on the other hand, I felt like just like not very much detail was gone into it. It was just like basic lines for outlying, and that's it. And then, like eyes were done. There was no actual like facial detail and expression as much. So I'm only gave it like a six. Six um, what? But uh, in general, I, I'm just thinking it might be just the team and the guy's art style. So uh, I'm just really excited for Indestructible Hulk's one that comes out. I think it's next week or the week after. Is, anyway. it, is it just me or does Spider-Man's head look kind of like a disco ball? Uh, I think that's what they tried to go with with the different sectioning because it reminds you of the old Spider-Man as opposed to the new one which is all yeah. just red. On the cover it just looks like it's catching a light weird. So yeah. it kind of looks like a disco ball. Kind of gets they sectioned off like the old mask except the new just pure red one. But anyway, I'm passing off over to Joey Man. Uh, this week guys, I've got hit number issue number two, uh, written by Bryce Carlson with art by Vanessa Del Rey. It is a noir crime thriller set in Los Angeles in the mid 50s. Uh, it revolves around the LAPD's hit squads that were unofficial, had an unofficial capacity with the LAPD. They were members doing uh, unofficial uh, illegal things, the LAPD couldn't get away with themselves. Uh, the story uh, is very re reminiscent of like old style pulps. Uh, the setting is very, uh, reminds me very much of L.A. Noir, which is an excellent game that oh, yeah. most of the guys here played and, and we all we all like that game a lot. Um, it's definitely a good pickup for anybody looking for like a throwback detective tale or, or somebody looking for something a little different. It's it's a really good book. Um, I give it eight and a half kapows for, ah! for the story. Uh, I like the story a lot. Um, the first issue was a little better, but this it's definitely going to get it better. The only problem I have with this series is it's a mini-series. There's only four issues there. Yeah. Happens too much, I think. But uh, the art, I only give about seven and a half kapow. Ah! It's, um... <laughs> the, the art really helps tell the story. It, it, it works in, in the context of, of the storytelling. It's just not as crisp as I would like it to be. 
Um, but it, it's uh, I understand where he's coming from. The same with with you and Jeff Lemire and, and Trillium. It, it works. It does its job. But it just it's not what I was looking for. Um, but I really like the book. And if if you are into anything like that, go and check it out. But uh, I'm gonna pass it off to uh, the Shack over there. All right. Today I'm reviewing Green Lantern issue 24. The reason why I'm reviewing this is because this is the start of the, the Lights Out event. This, as uh, described in the cover more or less that uh, all the lanterns lights are starting to slowly die their emotional the emotional spectrum is starting to get dried out that's that's what really the comic is about and uh the bad guy relic is from uh, a past universe so i found the story was pretty interesting i uh i didn't think it was great it was interesting there was a lot of yelling, but what made me happy about it is seeing Hal Jordan enter his role as the new leader of the Guardi of the Green Lantern Corps. Yeah, no, ever since I've been reading it, he hasn't really taken yeah. up much of the role, right? Eh? No, he hasn't. And this, 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 he actually gives orders and tells people what to do, and actually does a pretty decent job. And uh, that's what made me happy. The, the, writer, the writer of this book was Robert Vendini, and what I give the... Uh, the writing, I give it seven kapows. It was good, not great. The next, uh, the art. The art was done by Billy Tan. The art I loved. I thought it was really good. The contrast with the colors. It's always nice to see in Green Lantern because you get so many different colors. And it's nice to have a good artist that could that could do that and a good colorist. So, in uh, I will rate the uh, the art the art eight kapows. <coughs> I enjoyed it. The, the cover's really nice. Yeah, and, so, and the cover's really cool. Talking about the Green Lantern series is when, two years ago, DC released the New 52, which was a reboot for the whole universe. And so our discussion today is going to be on the DC New 52 versus the Marvel Now, which is just recently, as of four or five months ago. They're slowly releasing new titles for the Marvel Now, which is interesting. So I'm going to start off the discussion by uh, saying is, I really enjoyed the DC New 52, and one of the reasons why I really enjoy it is because DC, the DC New 52 created its own new continuity, and right now they're just sticking by their own continuity. One of the big examples of this is most issues that survived the, uh, the slashing when they cut a bunch of titles are all still at issue 24. This is all very impressive, impressive that all of them are still on the same numbers. Yeah. And they, they have a lot of the same stories, and they get intertwined really nicely because they're all part of that universe at the same time. But also, there were several issues at the beginning that got hacked and slashed like Destro. Just but that, because a yeah. bunch of them keep the same numbers just means that those are the successful ones of it. It means that, of course, they're going to be successful ones, but like DC's announced that every like six months was it, they're axing three tiles and making three new ones. I didn't hear it. Yeah, look at it. They did it the first time where they axed them and then they yeah, brought they it around. Do it every six yes, months. they're announced. They're cutting another three titles to release Wonder they Woman, do Love, and titles. Superman. And they're releasing another one, which is. I can't remember why. I can't remember this right now. There's another one coming out that was. There was literally every six Harley months. Quinn's they're cutting. Yeah, Harley Quinn, which is another one, which yeah. is axing another title. And then there's another one that's coming out. I can't they remember what it the is. Titles, I, I, I like that well. idea, the though. I like that idea, though. Well. Just, you know, like they, 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 they axing them. Of course. Like, that's a great idea. If they think they can make a better title, make a better title. I don't want to be reading something like that's shitty. I, I don't read a lot of. Uh, like, no offense. I enjoyed the first few issues of Batwing. I don't read it right now, unfortunately. Some type, I'm not saying that's Axe Batman at all. Though. Yes, I know. But I'm not saying is, there are some titles that just aren't good. You can't make good characters out of them. Like Deathstroke. How was I, was reading, I, was I was reading Deathstroke and Grifter. Both of them I actually was really enjoying. And except for, seven, right? except for when Rob Liefeld started writing both. It kind of went downhill, but as soon as Rob Liefeld so left, much it went hate for Rob Liefeld. <laughs> it's, it's not. <laughs> you can do it. It's so good though. I wish he has the Midas touch. I, I, I mean, he did great in the '90s. Just leave yourself in the '90s. Don't come back. I I like the idea of of yeah cycling through the stories, but at the same time, like they even create a new beginning. Which is fantastic. I, it I, is great for new see, readers. The reason I, I like that, it's like, amazing for new readers. I prefer yes, Marvel like, now because we all, you know, everybody, it's kind of hard to find someone who's completely ignorant of the comic book universe who has no idea anybody's backstory. So, like, 
Captain America and Wolverine, we already know where they're coming from, but it just puts them in another setting. Even, yeah, just they don't yeah. redo the origin. They just put them in another setting. They and never go from redid it. most of the origins. Yeah, for for the Marvel Kinda. now, like with Teen Titans, at least they did a whole new thing with it. But like with Marvel now, it's but just what like the Teen Titans are though. They're basically a miniature Justice a League subgroup. They're they're they're, okay, more sub even they're baby so, Justice League. They Super really didn't touch the whole bat redone. First. Yeah, true. They didn't touch the bat first. They really didn't touch the reinterpretation. Batman, Batman did. Batman's whole first issue was talking about how he had this thing with the Joker and how he broke out and how Joker was such a big thing. It was a whole origin of how Joker and Batman is such an arch nemesis and how Joker is so important. They've always been arch nemesis. I know, but that's a whole recap is what we're saying. So what I like about it is that they're continuing on the storylines opposed to like DC where they reinvented a lot of people. So like, I prefer Tim Drake's old storyline opposed to the new one because he was a lot, you know, tightly knit with Dick Grayson. Instead of this one, he seems a little bit more of a jerk. Like, I don't mind Tim Drake in the new one, but there's just little things I prefer about the old one. And then like... Just certain positions that they put people in, I'm like, this doesn't feel like it used to be, and it makes me not want to collect it. I understand your point, I really do, but I think this is more for the new readers than for us. I mean, we've been reading for a while. We can be tolerant and live with it, whereas the new readers, it's nice to have them to have their own universe. And it's, an, it's their own universe just for them. And it's nice to just continue on and read mm -hmm. from there. Like, if you started from the New 52 and you read a bunch of different comics, you get your own universe and you understand it. Whereas, as you said, the Marvel, the Marvel Now, you, you, get, you get their understanding, but then it kind of continues on. So it's like, well, yeah, I'm still the evolution. Is, I don't know. All of it gets evolution. explained each issue. Like, at the beginning of each issue, it explains the last, like, three issues. That's the only annoying part I, I have with the Marvel Now. I, did, I disagree, because, like, the Superior Spider-Man, if you didn't read issue 700, you didn't know what the heck was going issue on. Issue number one explains, I am blah, blah, blah. It does explain that, over, but you're, but you're like, how does that? When someone tells you Spider-Man just got taken over, you, you're like, well, how did this happen? Obviously, and it's then, to encourage you to issue, read issue 700, but saying that is, that big, that Marvel Now event, and Spider-Man taking on a new mm -hmm. persona, that's a huge thing. A lot, how much? How okay. many people do you think Same, but cried out in uh, horror when they mm -hmm. learned that... Uh, Octo, Dr. 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 Otto Octavius became Peter Parker. How many people just think, like, oh my god, why is this show Green Lantern again? He's supposed to be yelling, he's supposed to be the enemy of Hal Jordan, why is he working with himself? It's a whole nother thing with the Hal Jordan thing that they've changed. People are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Why is he like this? Why are people arguing this? Why is like Guy Gardner being like, who the hell are you to be doing this? You have to read the old aftermath, what was it called? Now, the, the War of Light? Yeah, no, it was like... War of the Green Lantern. No, that was, that was back before. It was like the one with Cronus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That whole thing, you had to read that to understand how all of them had to team up again. Yeah, but even when yeah, Green Lantern sure. first began, Sinestro was a Green Lantern before and too. Yeah. It was kind of like a really you know cool that. mini reboot. But but you don't need to. It doesn't need to say. It, he, he never really says that he was a Fear Lantern. He says he was a Green Lantern. But also See, it says, like, how? And then you're it, not a Green Lantern. It you. It then how is it even you. a Green Lantern, though, at the beginning? You're like, why isn't Hal because a Green Lantern? Because Hal, Hal was never a Green Lantern at the beginning of it. They're restarting but how they're like not, it's brand though. Yeah, but the thing is, with Marvel, they don't, don't need to restart to you. They don't need to restart. What they're doing is they're evolving the characters. That's why like, Wolverine, Wolverine is totally different. in comics. Kind of, but like it's all I want it from, if, if I'm beginning, it's nice to be introduced to characters. Like let's say, you know how I said again, my favorite character is Deathstroke. He had his own new 50. You know it was cancelled, but you know what? It it showed everyone him totally. And it says, it gives you the, the whole new brand idea, it gives you him. And I love it. It brings it to him in the universe. I love that. I understand your point. It's great. But as I said, I let's say I'm a novice comic book reader. It's still going to be hard for me to catch on. And another no. another thing that with the Marvel Now is you, you you're saying like oh well Marvel Now did the uh, did reboot and they went to issue one well that's all they did they went to they they they're like oh we just finished an arc we're gonna put it to one and say it's an issue one so sales go up that's not really a reboot that's just oh we're just gonna put but it back to issue one like we did la like two years ago but the difference was. New 52 claimed a reboot, Marvel now just said we're redoing it. That's all they, they said. They rebranded. They, they re never said they that they were rebooting reboot. their universe. Marvel they, never said. At the start of every it. Marvel book, there's a little quick snippet about last where you've issues. come from in the last issues and where the character comes from. That's always been that. Yeah. Every comic has. But East in West Marvel, 
in Marvel, they have it set up where that's all you really need. And then the character, Wolverine is, is not completely different. But he has more aspects to his character. He's a more rounded character now. He's more evolved. Steve Rogers, Captain America. If any character was rounded, it's been Wolverine. Because you could say any characteristic about him. I mean, he's been a character for how many no, years? No, because he, he, he was a lot different. He's been around for a long, long time. But the thing I've is... I've seen Wolverine Origins too. Can you let him go and finish his point, please? <laughs> instead of just cutting him off. Because the thing is, he was... Uh, one of the things, like, we talked about the Marvel AR app a few weeks yeah. ago. And uh, on one of the Wolverine issues, I was using it, and the writer for the Wolverine series, his name is Chris Cornell, and he was talking about how when we first get introduced as Wolverine as an X-Men, as a character, he's an adolescent in mind. Because he's had his whole psyche shattered by the fact that he has no idea where he's come from. At this point, though, with 30, 40 years since he's been created, he's come to terms with the character that he is, and with what he's done in his past, and he can live with that. And the thing is, the actions he takes now are actions where, yeah, sure, I could bring Kitty Pride along and she can help me do this, but it's gonna put a psychological wear on her that I, that I know I'm capable of handling, whereas she might not be, because it's a difficult thing to, to handle. So he's become much more mature emotionally, which is, which is great, and he's become a more um, open, like he used to be very um, reserved. He didn't share much of who he was with people. Now he's much more open uh, to to the other characters in the universe. And it's not a reimagining; it's an evolution. He's he's still Logan that we know and love from the cartoon when we were younger, but he's just learned how to become more Control. emotionally open and stuff, and how to use his dark past and how to use the things that used to wear on him as a strength instead of it being a weakness for him. So I, I love that about about them. The, the art that they're putting in all these Marvel books is like top flight. And and the stories are tremendous too. And, and they really they really show uh, these characters beautifully. Wolverine is, is, in my opinion, the best example of that from the ones I've read. But I mean, a lot of ones are, you know, Hawkeye's gotten huge all of a sudden. Daredevil's gotten huge. And those the characters, a lot. I will those characters aren't that. guys who are like traditional like superstars of comics, you know? Ga uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, you love that. Also, uh, with the new 52 was Guardians of the Galaxy and no. No, no, no. Not Marvel Now. now. Sorry, Marvel is, Now. So Sorry. It's not 52. Marvel Now. They, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and Nova, I really enjoy those titles. They're, they're all new titles because with Nova they, they created a new character. It's uh, the son of the previous Nova and it's it's really interesting. I advise you to check mm -hmm. it out. Like, the only thing that ever really like, got me skeptical with New 52, like, New 52, I'm not saying is terrible. It's just, it felt like they didn't put enough concern. Like, they were like, let's just make it brand new for everyone else, and they didn't take any concern from anyone else. Okay. Like, that caution that Red Robin has, I don't like. If you go and read an old issue, like any of the old Teen Titans compilations or that, or even like Gates of Gotham, and you see that Tim Drake compared to the new Tim Drake, you're gonna be like, why is he in this different costume? Why is he acting so differently? And it's just but that's exactly it. The weird. writer, the the artist got some uh, input, they, 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 nice. they got some input, which is really good. Unfortunately, you get some characters like Tim well, Drake, where actually not a whole lot of artists appreciate the new Tim, Tim Drake, Drake look. It's, they, they actually don't I'm like it. The thing is, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not a DC guy. I've never really been a fan. Although, the new 52 is a lot more interesting for me. I like. I'd say I probably liked about eighty-five percent of the the villains month issues that I read. There was a few that I, I really didn't like, but for the most part, I thought they were great. But for me, when I look at the Marvel now stuff, that's the stuff that I'm like, man, I can't wait for this to come out. Like, I can't wait to read. Like with the Trial of the Punisher, I'm sure they're setting up the next round of of uh, now stuff coming out. We have to wait to New York Comic we'll Con when they're we'll releasing the new we'll Marvel wait, new now. Frank, I think called. Frank's going to be one. I definitely saw Black Cat in promotional material. They didn't say out, outright it, that she's going to You never know what they're going to do. Well, well Heroes know. for Hire, right? And I'm, and stoked, to come I'm stoked. Yeah, Heroes for Hire. Luke Cage is running Mighty Avengers now. It's, it, it, you never know. So many good, and I was never an Avengers fan. And I'm, this guy got me going to regular Avengers, Avengers Assemble. New no, Avengers, Avengers and Mighty Avengers. Well, Avengers that's one of the big things that we are noticing, though, is that the new 52 is more new-friendly. Whereas mm. Marvel now 
is more towards, well, we're going to give you a crash course on the character, and then we'll throw you back in the universe, which, again, it's, I get, it's good, I understand, but it's still, it'll still be confusing for re New Reapers. I understand people will not agree with me, but New 52 is great New Friendly, and that's why I'm going to stick to the New 52. I understand you all don't agree with me, but that's fine. I, but I wouldn't say I don't, just, I don't agree with you, I, I, uh, but for me, it's like... Sure, but they're both I, very well, new like friendly. The but yes, they do like to rehab. Really, really well. Like they like to re say what they're doing with DC, which is nice, and it's a whole new thing. So you're yeah. completely there. But on the other hand, Marvel does have their little bits yeah. that they're keeping. They're both gonna be great. I'm exactly. still gonna keep collecting bubbles. Oh, I know. It's like I don't know. I just don't like how they're like majorly um, changing a couple. Of thank people. you, everyone, again for uh, coming and watching our weekly show. And don't forget to pick up your weekly comics. Bam. No. Even though it is for me.